students and, and I'm so glad to go second because um, uh, my presentation is on the experimental evidence of uh, key consensus field in uh, and information transfer in living cells and also in water. So um, as uh, Farza just mentioned, uh, we have uh, 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 so the content of this uh, expect, uh, presentation is more on exploring the effects of key consciousness on pure water and uh, living cells. And uh, so uh, key consciousness uh, was um, founded by uh, Tahiri um, at the Cosmo Health Research Center, where the headquarters um, is in Toronto. And um, so uh, the T uh, is to differentiate with um, um, our uh, uh, common uh, assumptions and knowledge uh, as, as, well, as well as information we have of consciousness. So when I um, am talking about the effects of tea consciousness, it's uh, um, the information that we just heard also that uh, uh, it's talking about the, this consciousness that's not neither matter nor energy and can be transferred to energy and matter through information. So there is an uh, announcer uh, who announces the information to this cosmic consciousness network uh, and the cosmic consciousness fields um, are what consequently affects the subjects under the study. Um, so the question is, uh, how what can we understand and study uh, consciousness fields and information transfer in uh, systems? And uh, like any uh, scientific experiments, there is uh, an effect, a causal effect before uh, applying the consciousness and after. Uh, and so you know, understanding what uh, happens uh, in matter, um, either in this case water or living cells uh, before uh, applying this and consciousness and after. So the hypothesis here is that exposure of water and living cells to uh, consciousness fields um, changes their properties, uh, of the property of water and the energetic um, uh, energy production in cells. And the null hypothesis is of course that there is no change after PCF treatment. So the first experiment deals with the effect of consciousness on pure water. So we have four samples. This was done in a laboratory condition where uh, just pure distilled water was um, filled up uh, in uh, glass flasks. Uh, so 200 uh, ml of water in the control sample. So this is the untreated sample. And then there are four, the three um, um, flasks were treated with uh, tea consciousness. And so the pH and temperature was uh, measured in these samples um, with this uh, pH meter. So uh, with the same probe, you can uh, measure both the uh, temperature and pH of the samples. Um, so the pH and temperature was uh, measured at 0.5, uh, 30 minutes, one hour, uh, one hour, uh, 90 minutes, then 24, 48, 72 hours. Uh, and this was done three times uh, for replicability purposes. And so these are the results. Um, so on the left side, you'll see the uh, pH change uh, in the control sample compared to the three uh, TCF. So this is an average of the three experiments at the 24, 48, 72 hour time frame. So the first uh, 90 minutes has had the smallest effect. And then this is the uh, more significant results that you can see. So under control conditions, the pH of the water stays at 7.5. Um, and then under the TCFs, uh, the pH slowly decreases. So it becomes more acidic. And the TCF3 is the, has the most strongest effect where the pH becomes close to 6. Sorry, I, I must have missed your head. If you don't mind, can you tell what the TCFs are? What oh, is right. These are the conscious. Uh, TCF is the consciousness field, T consciousness fields. How do you apply it? And uh, oh yes, yeah, so there is an announcer. Sorry. sorry, so the announcer uh, uh, is a person who um, uh, 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 wills, I guess, 
or announces the uh, co connection of the consciousness to a subject of study. So this person is uh, becomes an announcer through a training that uh, this this is just um, under um, like s s so that uh, there's more is there more information on this uh, that we can. But it's, it's a person, so there are one, yes. three people, TCF one, two, three? TCF, uh, so these are fields different? of consciousness oh. that get um, applied, um, yes, there, there are different fields, uh, there are many, like... But by one person? Yes, right, okay. yeah. Uh, so the experiment gets registered on this website, on the Cosmo Intel website, and uh, the, uh, the announcer doesn't really know about the details of the experiment, they just uh, say at this time apply the, the consciousness, or you know, and the, to the samples, and for so long, for an hour, and and then the, doesn't know about the rest of the study. The, the rest gets done in a laboratory setting, uh, where also the person who's analyzing the samples doesn't know about what the details of that announcement are. So it's double blind that study. Um, so and then. Um, so once um, we can, we have the um, pH and temperature of these samples. We can use the thermodynamic parameters to calculate the free energy, Gibbs free energy, enthalpy, um, and entropy, uh, all based on temperature change. So um, after these calculations are done, which I have here, I can explain more if you're interested. Uh, the um, the Gibbs energy uh, change in uh, ener uh, free energy is uh, decreased uh, under the consciousness field uh, compared to control, and uh, the consciousness field number three has a, a higher uh, significant change. Um, the enthalpy or, uh, or yeah, enthalpy doesn't change, or the uh, heat of the system doesn't change uh, a lot, but on the TCF3 there is a, a slight increase in temperature. And entropy has decreased uh, based on uh, the calculation. So, uh, and TCF shows the most significant change in entropy. So, the system is gaining uh, en um, information. So, based on Shannon's theory, uh, the higher the um, information trans transfer, the lower the like entropy levels. So, if we calculate in a change in um, information compared to the control sample, uh, we have the, the TCF1 having two bits of information gained per molecule, and TCF2 uh, and 3 have more you know, uh, information gained. So that's the effect on water. The next one is the experiment on living cells, and these are done on a HEG 293 cells. So these are kidney cancer cells, uh, and they're grown in culture just a uh, uh, normal biological experiment under 20, for 24 hours. Uh, the TCF uh, treatment is applied at the 23rd hour of the 24, so the last hour of the cells being in culture, they were treated with the consciousness fields. Cells were lysed and then they were prepped for luciferase assay. So this really is just a standard test uh, assay where you can calculate the uh, ATP or adenosine triphosphate production in cells. And so um, the results show that um, under control, um, so I won't get into these like, ugly numbers. <laughs> to me, but, uh, yeah, I mean, they are uh, pr pretty significant, but uh, like this is just, uh, I will point you to the last uh, column because this is calculating the relation to the basal rate uh, of uh, ATP. So ATP, uh, concentration in the control samples, and then in the TCF1 to 3, there is an increase. And if we do a basal rate calculation um, to compare to control, there is a five time increase in the TCF, uh, 11 fold increase in the TCF2, and then uh, seven fold increase in the ATP production under TCF. So, is this physically possible uh, for a system to do? Um, that's the question because. Um, so in the last hour, so everything happened in the last hour because the cells were under the same condition for 23 hours. And so to see if it's physically possible, 
Uh, we know that the cells were grown in a culture, medium culture that had 4.5 grams per liter of glucose. So that's the energy they had available to them. Um, and, and they were growing within that 24 hours. These are cancer cells, they're growing really fast, so they're using energy. Um, and so the required uh, molarity of the glucose for the control uh, is five uh, glucose per millimolar. So this is the amount of information, ex the amount of energy they need uh, for them to um, perform their uh, fit, uh, cellular activities during that period of time. Uh, then the, uh, under TCF one and one, two, and three, uh, they would need uh, 26, uh, 53, and then 35 uh, uh, glucose per millimolar in order to uh, not only perform their cellular function, grow, but also um, produce as much ATP. So, um, and then if we look, so that means uh, they would need a 19, well, okay, so in the control, they would have to use 19% of the, their available energy, but in the TCF samples, they would require 100 times more, 200, Eleven times more, or um, or 139 times uh, the initial glucose content, which is um, simply not available in the in the, in the culture uh, media. So this is a puzzle; it's a paradox. And uh, if we look at the um, sorry, next is uh, if this is energetically possible. So first, we like uh, in the one hour time point. Timely, it's not possible. Um, physically, it does. The cells don't have enough uh, glucose uh, to produce that much ATP. And is it energetically possible? So, if you look at the uh, moles of ATP that are produced in the control and calculate the mitochondrial change in the temperature, so there is for every mole of ATP. This is known knowledge that we have to uh, the, the cells. Um, gain um, energy, or at in the form of the temperature. Um, so for producing a, a mole of ATP, they would increase their mitochondrial temperature by eight uh, degrees Kelvin. And this is, um, and, and the cell, so mitochondrial change in temperature is uh, actually higher than the cellular uh, change in temperature, which is three degrees. Um, so this is still um, understandable because cells are okay within, uh, they, they can still survive with the three uh, degrees increase in the cell, in the temperature. But if we do the same calculation for the samples under TCF, they would have uh, needed a really high temperature in the mitochondria, so 37, 85, and uh, 53 degrees Kelvin. And uh, the cells would have had to increase their temperature 13, 29, 13, 29, 18 degrees higher than what it was. So um, this would melt the cells, uh, or like they would not be able to phys uh, physically function under such high temperatures. So what has happened to energy? In, it's an open system, but what has ha happened to energy uh, here? How, how um, the energy wasn't uh, uh, physically present in the form of glucose, and it has been released at such high um, time and rates that is not physically possible for the cells. So, and if we uh, also calculate the uh, information change uh, on the TCFs compared to control, there is an increase in uh, information, um, uh, information gain uh, using Shannon's theory again. So, um, with, um, uh, so Tari has proposed a, um, to explain the metabolic changes uh, in energy, uh, uh, changes in energy and uh, information transfer. So he introduces the existence of the hi uh, hidden uh, energy called biological dark energy uh, to explain this phenomena. So the um, auto ionization of water and also the mitochondrial oxidative change uh, H plus gradients uh, cannot um, help us explain um, the observed phenomena, so uh, that's being contributed to a hidden or a biological dark energy. 
So the conclusions are um, that the TCFs uh, do alter the properties of the non inorganic and organic beings, and in, in this case, the water. And uh, water is a really fundamental um, element in the universe. Like our uh, planet is 70 made up of um, water uh, at 70 percent. Our cells uh, are made up of water. And so um, if consciousness fields can uh, impact water, um, then, and that was the water, uh, H plus the ingredient, then um, this is um, very important to uh, further base experiments on and to not just replicate these experiments to see if they can be replicated in different biological uh, settings, but also um, how it, and how, also how the dark biological energy uh, can explain these presented phenomena. So uh, this definitely, may, um, so yeah, I mean, uh, that's the end of my presentation. Okay. But uh, this is a research team uh, in um, various locations and uh, I'll take any questions. Uh, I have a question. So uh, I know you said the PCF is found in a non and so can any person be an announcer or is there some, tra you said training? So the, any person can be trained to become an announcer or do they have to have certain qualification? Yeah, anyone can be trained to become an announcer. Um, and I don't think, I think there has been any more um, anyone that? Sure, of course. So um, um, in regards to announcing, if you would please show that, uh, yeah image for announcement so when when you can when you consider different types of meditations in, in different types of meditation you either for example people either or meditators either imagine something or they focus on something for example they breathe or some object uh, so there there is going to be visualization uh, different kind of things that include, includes both space and time. So here, the key difference here for T consciousness field is we need to eliminate space and time. So, so that's a huge difference between this type of application of T consciousness field and other types of meditation that, uh, that at least I have seen. So how this is done, actually the training, part of the training is to how to get space and time to zero. They are trained to get space and time to zero, why? So based on having space and time going to zero, you are going to have T consciousness field. So when you talk about different types of fields that are coming from the existence of matter and energy, like electromagnetic field, like uh, gravity field, even like quantum field. So when you talk about all of these physical fields, there should be some sort of matter or energy existing. So based on those, you have those fields. Here, we are talking about going outside space and time by having space and time going to zero. And based on that, there are going to be some fields under T consciousness, which is neither matter nor energy. So the field under T consciousness is going to be a type of field which is neither matter nor energy. And that field can have some impact on the material properties. So the results that Nushin showed, and actually is going to explain another uh, research that the team has done is exactly this concept, that you have some basic fields on matter and energy which we all aware of. There are some other fields on their consciousness which is neither matter nor energy and can have impact on matter and energy. Okay. So that's the concept. But it can be available to anyone and it's, um, uh, it's basically 